With practice, things get easier, right? Right. When you look at a picture of someone and want to draw them, a crawling fear comes over you that you'd mess up here and there and have to erase and ruin something else in the drawing that you like. Something else doesn't look right and you erase it over and over and over. You're drawing with a hand that's too heavy. No, now it's too light. Get it accurate already. You're terrible at this. Believe me, that half of your brain only knows as much as you do. It doesn't learn as fast as you do. Drawing is too much fun to abandon now, even if the left eye is too big or too small or too low or too high. So, what will your choice be? You can listen to the little ignorant half of your brain, tear up your drawing, burn your sketchbook, bite your pencil to bits. Or, you can go with the flow, smooth out your paper, hold your pencil with a warrior's might and a fanatic's enthusiasm, and press on. But lightly. A heavy stroke is hard to erase. If you don't like your artwork, that's only your opinion. If you listen to no one but yourself, your little bubble of self-confidence is going to pop and you'll end up falling from a considerable height. Look for a second opinion, but choose not to listen to the ones who only say, you're so bad at art, why are you even doing that? That is not the same thing as constructive criticism, by the way. What you need to pay attention to is when people offer their opinion and advice. Weigh that in your mind and think of how it could help you. If it won't, thank them kindly, but don't call them stupid for offering the wrong advice. Art is a fun thing, not a competitive thing, though of course this all depends on your motives. Entering contests are enjoyable and exhilarating, but doing it just so you can compare and reassure yourself that your artwork is better than some others is just plain foolish. No offense to the ignorant half of the human brain. I don't know if I'm the best parsnip to get instructions from, but I'll try my best to show you a few things. For me, every drawing of a living thing begins with a circle, then with people, two lines, vertical and horizontal. Very basic indeed. This was a sketch, so I wasn't really following the exact same measures as usual, but since it was a sketch, I was doing everything much more loosely and freely. I just went with the flow and followed the faint idea of what I wanted in my head. What could be hard for a lot of people is knowing what size circle to draw for what place. You don't draw the same person the same exact size every time, so how is it done? Well, let's say you draw two loose circles for the shoulders since you finished the skeleton of the head and the neck. These circles look just a little too big to be the size of this person's shoulders. So what do you do to avoid that dreaded loop of erasing and redrawing? Even though the shoulder circles look too big, the reason they're really there at all is to tell you where the shoulders themselves will be. It's a measuring tactic. When you draw the torso and legs, you can then draw circles for the elbows and wrists too, measured based on the rest of the body. My point being that you shouldn't need these irritating misshapen circles throughout the rest of the arching process. You can shape the shoulder around it. Remember what I said about practice? This would be the best time to gather your patience and know that with it, things get easier. The shoulders may look too small or too big right now, even if you weren't using that terrible circle, but hang in there and keep drawing. You will get better in time, believe me. I'd even suggest not throwing away some of your drawings. A year from now, you can compare your work with your work from the past and become happy.